Greetings everybody, John Sar here, and this is a guide to all four Elephant Warlords on hard difficulty in Assassin's Creed Origins. I had an enormous amount of fun making this video and actually researching the origin of all of their names. All of the different elephants like to have some history behind the names of them. Anyway, so a couple very important tips. Health on hit bows are absolutely critical for getting through all four elephants. I would recommend killing this guy first. I found him to be the easiest. Maybe the pair of elephants is the easiest, but that might just be because I had so much experience at dealing with elephants at that point. Uh, always restock your arrows between each round and be sure to max your arrow inventory and health. Uh, it's very important to, to completing, or I mean, all these elephants are level 40. They're tough. This is no cakewalk by any stretch of the imagination. The, this is the hardest set of challenges in the game. And, uh, man, it's very satisfying when you do complete them. I was kind of disappointed in the overall rewards for all four elephants because you only get uh, legendary stuff. You get a legendary outfit for the first elephant and a legendary predator bow for the fourth, and that's it. Um... And also, kind of a universal tip, you cannot kill the dude on top of the elephant. You can change the difficulty anytime you want, but don't be a pussy and just keep it on hard. Uh, so the first elephant, this guy here, stay on his heels. I used a heavy blunt for this boss, which I would not recommend for the other elephants. And you know, I was kind of impressed with these challenges because there was more of a difference between all the elephants than I was initially expecting going into the fights. Not just cosmetically, but in the elephant's attack patterns. So I used the heavy blunt for this boss. Um, it's much easier to get in a few consecutive attacks versus this elephant here than the other elephants. You could also use your strongest heavy blade, which is what I use for the other elephant fights because that does huge burst damage, but this guy isn't as nimble as some of the other elephants. So his name is Herwenifer, uh, and he, uh, which is, is a name from Upper Egyptian, apparently Nubian origin, who led Upper Egypt, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Herwenifer was the name of an Egyptian leader who led Upper Egypt into secession from the rule of Ptolemy IV in 205 BC. No monuments are attested to this king, but along with his successor, he held a large part of Egypt until 186 BC, and he died around uh, that time. So, uh, again, health on hit is extremely critical for, being, for survivability on these fights. And uh, this guy also I found to be the most forgiving and his ranged attacks were the easiest to deal with. Just stay on his rear heels and continually chase him down to get behind him and use adrenaline as like kind of a moment of invincibility. And with the heavy blunt, the dodge and then light attack is the fastest attack. And if it crits, it can do a thousand plus damage on every hit. Uh, and whenever your health gets below half, that's when I would start to focus on um, getting your health back up with the health on hit arrows. Yeah, just, just keep circling around him. I'm, again, not the same strategy for all the different bosses. But anyway, oh, also forgot to mention every elephant you kill gets you an ability point, which is incredibly helpful and uh, very you know, I, I was, I'm still surprised at how far I am into this game and how few or how many abilities I still have to unlock. So this is the el or the elephant, the outfit that you get for defeating the first elephant. Going on to elephant two, Suros. Suros? I'm gonna call him Suros, like the Suros regime gun in Destiny One. Uh, means the Syrian was believed to be the last war elephant of the. Carthaginian General Hannibal, uh, Hannibal's army in Italy. Several, several Roman writers gave accounts of Suros, which is probably a large Asian elephant with one tusk, though this guy has two tusks. Although a Carthaginian coin struck in the time of Hannibal depicts an African elephant, 
Historians believe Suros was an Indian elephant descended from those seized by the Ptolemies of Egypt, Alexander's successors in their campaigns in Syria. According uh, to legend, Suros wore a red cloth and may have carried a red shield and a howdah, a construction on the animal's back, like this, action, this elephant actually does, which served as a platform for Hannibal, who had difficulties overlooking the battlefield after losing one eye from an infection. I got, I just found this so fascinating. I, I looked all this information up online. This is not in the game. Um, so for this elephant fight here, you need to equip a shield with good ranged resistance. The big change for Suros is that his is that his rider fires lots of arrows, and you need to block them all. Uh, he is more nimble and swings a little bit more than some of the other. Or, mm, his turning radius, I guess, is more nimble if you're to compare it to a car uh, than some of the other elephant uh, warlords. So for this, I actually tried a weapon with a combo multiplier, which I found kind of effective, but using the head splitter axe would also be very effective as well. Uh, typically, I would hit him a few times to get the combo multiplier up to about 2x, and then hold R1 to do the charge ability on him, and that the combo multiplier carries over to the... Um, to the charge ability, and you can get a nice big damage burst with uh, the um, with the combo multiplier. Unfortunately, for whatever dumb reason, I equipped uh, a sickle sword as my second weapon here. I should have used head splitter. That would have been a more effective way to uh, weapon to switch to and use the uh, adrenaline burst damage attack with. Oh, also, there is a, um, a papyrus puzzle solution in this arena here. If you want to see a list of all the papyrus puzzles, locations, and their solutions, uh, there's a link in the description that has them all. I forget what the weapon actually was. I want to say it was a shield. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, just hold R1 with like a... I was using a staff that has the combo multiplier on it, and this was actually, I think this ended up being the first elephant that I killed in my conquest of the elephants. Oh, no, no, that's not true, because I'm wearing the gear from the first, from killing the first one. Never mind. Ignore that. Uh, and this guy was more difficult than he really should have been. He just, he swings so much, it's... It's really challenging to just to to avoid damage, and um, and also this elephant arena has quite a few more barricades kind of scattered around it than some of the other elephant arenas, which can make it difficult to run away from him at times. But uh, similar to the last elephant, just staying on his heels when you can, getting that range damage when you can, and uh, using those adrenaline damage bursts when uh, when it's possible, I found to be very effective. Hey, another ability point. God, I still need a lot of ability points. I wonder how high the limit for those master abilities gets in this game. Uh, so the third elephant, Jumbo. Now this one I actually knew. Jumbo was sold to P.T. Barnum of Barnum and Bailey Circus Game, who took him to America. Uh, he was sold by the London Zoo in March 1882. And the giant elephant's name was actually the source of the word Jumbo, meaning large in size, obviously. Jumbo the elephant was the origin of the word Jumbo. Uh, on May 30th, 1884, Jumbo was one of Barnum's 21 elephants that crossed the Brooklyn Bridge to prove that it was safe after 12 people died during a stampede caused by mass panic over the collapse of the bridge when it uh, was open to the public over a year uh, or a year prior. So uh, that's the origin of Jumbo. I always thought that was fascinating. Anyway, uh, for Jumbo here, you want to keep your distance more than most of the other elephants. He is the fastest turning of all the elephants and he can also be stunned by smoke bombs. 
So if you hit R1 and then triangle or Y, uh, you drop a smoke bomb, which kind of distorts his vision and will freak sometimes. I, it's about 50-50 chance of success. Kind of stop him in his track if he is charging you. Um, and also he has a unique attack where if he kind of turns away from you, sprints for, you know, a second or two, and then does another quick 180, and then charges right back at you, he, it, it's, it's like an unbreakable charge. And he will run headfirst into a wall and actually stun himself for a minute, leaving him very vulnerable to attacks. So for this fight, I ended up using uh, my dual swords that have a very fast adrenaline recharge in addition to the head splitter axe. Uh, using, and I obviously use the head splitter axe and the adrenaline ability quite a bit throughout this fight. Using the smoke bombs is a great way to, to increase, re, uh, uh, increase adre the, the, the adrenaline regeneration. And uh, the bow and arrow with the uh, health on hit is a great way to increase adrenaline regeneration and get a lot of those adrenaline attacks uh, in as well. Finally, the final boss, the final uh, elephants. Now, these elephants actually individually seem to have less health than the other elephant fights, but combined, they can be quite tricky. And I think I killed these two guys the easiest, but that was because I killed them last and had the most experience dealing with elephants. Um, Katesh is the ranged elephant, and he constantly runs away from you. I recommend killing him first, because if you kill his partner first, Katesh, K Ketse, I don't know how to say his name, uh, becomes very, very difficult to kill, and the rider on top of him uh, becomes much more difficult to uh, to dodge his attacks. So Kintesh is a goddess uh, adopted into the ancient Egyptian religion. She was a fertility goddess of sacred ecstasy and sexual pleasure. And Resef uh, was a deity in the Egyptian religion associated with the plague. Uh, so as you chase Kintesh, Switch to your dual swords or whatever weapon you have that gives you the most passive adrenaline regeneration. And also, throwing smoke bombs, uh, when the smoke bombs are damaging these guys, actually gives you adrenaline regeneration as well. So hopefully you have the, the smoke bomb uh, damage upgrade by now. I mean, you probably do. It's a fairly cheap one, if I remember correctly, one or two ability points. Yeah, fairly early in the tree, and if you're level 40, you probably have it. Um, great way to quickly regenerate your adrenaline, and then uh, as soon as your adrenaline meter is filled, switch back to uh, your head splitter axe or whatever other high level axe you have that does a lot of burst damage, and just keep chasing Katesh around until uh, until you kill him. And it's kind of weird, like when you take his health down all the way, his health bar doesn't disappear. He runs off into a corner and dies and kills himself by running into the wall. So now that you've taken care of him, the second elephant is quite a bit more, uh, quite a bit easier to take care of on his own because he's going to be running at you. And at this point, you probably have a lot of experience at just dealing with one elephant at a time. Um, also, I found it easier, and once or twice I noticed during this video, uh, doing these elephant fights during the daytime because you could be running away from an elephant while chasing an elephant I actually was able to use their shadows as an indicator that one of them was running up on me and when to actually dodge away so if you have to if you're doing these fights during the nighttime uh, just meditate and get it to be daytime so you have some long shadows to help you out uh, also Unfortunately, so some of the arenas, you can actually attack the elephants from outside of the arena with your bow. You can see them from some of the vantage points above, but they don't actually take any damage, which kind of sucks. So anyway, thanks for checking out this video. I hope it helped. Um, I need your guys' help, though. If this video did help you, why do I need your help? Well, 
a lot of other YouTube channels, I believe, just fucking suck, and YouTube favors videos that do not get right to the point. They have extended introductions where they just waste your fucking time asking for likes and comments and that kind of shit at the start of the video. And I've done that sometimes too, but now I'm gonna ask you specifically at the end, contributing with a comment or some tips and tricks or giving the video a like helps these videos out a lot and helps cut down on spam on YouTube. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you helped get that trophy or achievement, and if it did help you out, give me a comment. Thanks for watching, and game on.